Hello everyone. So today we have Dr. Arjun uh, Suresh with me and he had a wonderful journey in this past one year from a rank of 1.21 lakhs. He has come to 5,825. It is a commendable journey as such. I'm sure that each and every one of you might be uh, like interested to know what changes he did to make this huge transformation. I'm really proud of you and this big journey that you have taken, Dr. Arjun. And congratulations on this rank. Thank you, madam. Thank you. So uh, what were the main changes that you brought about in the preparation as compared to the previous year, uh, previous attempt as such? What do you think were the negatives that you did and what were the main changes that you brought in this preparation? Can you throw some light on it? Uh, I think the first thing I did was understanding uh, the person, kind of person I am and how can I study. And I have understood that I would uh, better benefit from the advantage that I have a face-to-face -face center nearby. So joining to a face-to-face -face center nearby was my first choice. So I had doctorals here, so I was able to join here. And uh, that actually helped me because I am um, more of a kind of old school book and pen person. So uh, attending a class live, uh, not live, uh, as face-to-face, -face, uh, interacting with the faculty, uh, some mnemonics they give there, and some uh, extra things they provide in the uh, classroom is very beneficial for us. That will actually help us some figures, some uh, diagrams, some tables, charts, they actually, how they write. Those are comes to memory when uh, we get a question. That actually helps. Yes. So Dr. Arjun was a student from our DPLC Trivandrum batch assets. And as he told, like the face-to-face -face classes really helps you to stay on your toe and be in power with the preparation. You will not like just put it in, the video will be playing and you're not listening. Such kind of things will not happen. You're fully focused in the class. And I think he utilized the classes to the maximum to make this huge change as such. Uh, which subjects did you find as most helpful, Dr. Arjun, in this year of preparation? I think uh, the subjects that are gold mine for preparation and everyone should follow is OBG, PSM, surgery. And if we actually do the workbook and the QRP videos and the QRP question bank even and the main question bank, uh, I'm sure that we can actually grab a lot and some, some minor subjects. Actually, we uh, discredit them because we will get four, four questions or five questions from them. But actually, uh, those are actually the four solid questions we will always get. For example, ortho, dermat. Uh, there was actually a program called HIT. Uh, I actually uh, did DERMA from that. It was all figure based, just four hours of class or so. That actually can cover up uh, completely of the syllabus that is needed for that exam because it was all based on PYQs and PYTs. That actually really helps uh, to cover the subjects uh, to the best level and actually uh, increase the mark. Minor subjects actually really help. And the major, these four, uh, like PSM, OBG, surgery, and uh, the second year subjects like patho, micro, pharmac. Uh, these are actually, if we do it right from PYQs, PYTs, the workbooks, I think actually we can, anyone can correct this. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm pretty sure you have put in a lot of effort as such. But yes, I think the effort which you put were very smart and in the right direction as well, which helped you. I think many students, sometimes what happens is they keep on reading without revising. But as he told, he has done that important areas as such. Many a times now there is this idea that previous year topics are out. There is no point of doing that. Still, that previous year question might not get repeated, but the topics are so important. Especially it is the rapid revision program where all the subjects are covered in three to four days. I'm happy that you utilized it to the maximum as such. And I think his approach is very good in the sense that, as uh, Dr. Arjun mentioned, he did not leave any subjects. Rather than going to 100% of every subject, all 19 subjects are covered as such, which is a very important thing. Because even like smaller subjects, uh, if you cover forensic, whatever three, four questions that will come from that, you will definitely get it. Rather than just going to one subject, 100%, all 19 has to be covered and revised as well. Uh, Dr. Arjun, how many revisions did you plan in the last one year? Uh, because of the postponement, uh, we had, uh, before the postponement, uh, my INICT was, uh, I planned it like I want two revisions before INICT, but I was able to complete just one and a half ish. And my rank was bad. I got like 14,000 and I was like, uh, what to do? I don't know how to prepare. But uh, from that, I uh, wrote, uh, took GTs, uh, GTs with video solutions 
and i was analyzing i have understood that there are some areas that i need to give extra care which i if i tackled uh, those are my uh, strength points and uh, so there are some subjects uh, that however i write like feeds end and all, i will almost get a good 80 percentage to 90 percentage marks most of the time so rather than focusing on what i have i uh, started on subjects that i am losing marks and i built it up on that and uh, i changed my strategy kind of after that INICT and there was one uh, revision plan that that time running uh, in our uh, details to Trivandrum. There was a schedule a day, uh, there was recall based test every uh, day at, at till 10 a.m. So I used to study from morning uh, till uh, 10, uh, next day 10 o'clock and I used to attend that exam and I, that helped me to cover the syllabus. I couldn't cover the entire thing, uh, but actually that helped us to uh, keep the things rolling and have a momentum while the, the postponement was going on. So uh, that the solving the QRPs was my uh, QRP question bank was one of my target. I, I targeted that I need to complete this QRP question bank, uh, like it was 4,500 questions or something in one month. So I kept on doing that. So I had a, I kept my momentum while the postponement was going on. And I think that actually helped me. That's really important. Like once it gets postponed, we just take that back and then we just get slowed down. But that time is also very important as such. Uh, I feel again, he has shown that determination again. Even that INI exam, when it once it went bad, rather than thinking about how it will go in NEET PG, the main thing that he did was to improve the preparation, analyze, and to make right as much as possible. Like he attended, the, you have attended that video lectures, which is there, especially the video GPs, which are there. I think it is much easier to cover the video GPs which I think Dr. Toriel was the first platform to actually come up with the video explanation along with the GPs. And many students have given this feedback that it's easy to follow with the GP, with the video explanation as such. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy that that really helped. The most tedious process uh, for attending the GT is not attending the GT itself. It's the, uh, re uh, the how to analyze it. So uh, I have left a lot of GTs. I have written mm -hmm. them and I have analyzed it. So I changed that. The video solutions actually help that it can save time and the effort that is needed to read the entire solution. We can actually hear it and understand that and uh, just move on. As subject wise, we can move. Uh, that that was really helpful. How do you incorporate the GTs to your current notes? Do you like add those important points which you missed out in your workbook that is provided from doc tutorials, or did you make it as a separate one? How did you like combine both this? I used to add things uh, that I found on the way, I will uh, actually see if it is uh, that important for that uh, or if it's too extra thing uh, mm -hmm. that I should go. Uh, so I will uh, incorporate according to uh, what I feel. If it's the PYT, PYQ, I will definitely go. And uh, if, if it's something that I feel like, oh, this is this is a possibility. So I will add it to the main notes. And next time I revise, I uh, read along with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a very good approach. And that shows actually insight. You know, some topics, at least 10 percentage would be like so much high five, less likely to come. And you're adding that important area as such, which is more likely to come. That actually like requires a more of wisdom and insight actually to add it and to incorporate into the preparation. I think the preparation strategy is really good. I'm pretty sure the juniors are going to be really benefited with this. And like, did you maintain a 20th book or a volatile book for the last 10 days? Like, how did you go about with the last 10 to 15 days of preparation? Uh, I used to uh, write down some pages, page numbers of the work. I used to revise from my workbook itself because I, I like reading. I like reading from the main note rather than the electronic. I don't like using phone, tablet or something. So I just like my book itself. So I used to write down the pages which I want to uh, go back and see before the exam. Uh, while I was revising itself, I was I thought like, ah, this is a staging, this is a classification that I need to go back to. So I would write the page number there. And next time I revise, I just look at page numbers because I assume that I would have known the other things because I need, need not read those again. So I used to go that page numbers and I used to read from them. So I had, uh, because rewriting everything into a new book was uh, a tedious process. So I thought this is much more simpler for me. But uh, some uh, charts, some tables, I used to keep it uh, as PDFs or something. Uh, the, uh, before the exam, many faculties uh, used to be like uh, ortho, uh, Rohit Sar used to put some splints and fractures. Uh, some small PDFs of one to two pages. Those are really helpful in the last two days. We can just 
quickly scan through them and go. Uh, we will remember those tests. Uh, mm. Those are really helpful. Mm, yes. So rather than making a complete different set of notes, you place your self note itself, like uh, mark out the core areas and then revise it for the last piece. Especially for students who feel that writing everything again is tedious or do, who don't like to take screenshot. I think I think that's a very valuable piece of advice. But whatever it is, important that you do a quick revision of these volatile areas in the last 10 to 15 days, which is consistently done by all top assets. And I think rather than Yes. Yeah, rather I think than, rather than putting, uh, studying continuously for uh, 14 hours a day and not studying the other day, I think every what everyone should think that uh, this is a consistent effort. So consistently, if we put 10 hour or 8 hour, that's more beneficial. So mm -hmm. uh, while we are doing that, we can uh, actually write down what we are, what we tend to forget. And if we add those at the last time, that will actually benefit. Mm -hmm. How many hours did you put in in the initial phase of your preparation and how much did you stretch it by the last 10 days of preparation? How was the journey? Uh, after the, uh, I joined, I was just following the class. Uh, after the class, there was an exam. Uh, there would be a gap of like two to three days. So I used to uh, study casually those days. I used to complete that uh, main question bank we have. I used to try to complete. I couldn't complete the whole thing. Uh, but I used to complete the main question bank and then write the exam and that used to keep on going. So I didn't actually measure how many hours or something. But after the classes got over, I started to actually consistently uh, study up to eight to 10 hours. Generally, I, I haven't actually increased many hours, but I was consistent with that eight to 10 hours. I think it's not the number of hours that matter. It is how focused you are in those hours. 8 to 10 hours of focus study, which is there, where you are actively recalling and actively revising, doing a smart study, which is more important. And I think once you start enjoying the process, you don't count the hours, as Dr. Arjun said. You just go on with the flow till how much ever you can and just go with it. And uh, what was the like main mindset? I'm pretty sure maybe this time also if need is postponed or everything. How did you keep that momentum going on? Who are the main support system or how did you keep your mindset so calm and focus to get that final sprint in preparation. I was so happy I have good faculties. Uh, my parents especially helped throughout my preparation. I was actually staying in my home. So they would provide me. They would uh, don't ask me oh, what are they doing, how many hours you are sitting. They would just uh, give me uh, food, water, whatever. Uh, they used to support me the entire way. If I uh, after that INICT, they just said, ah, it's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't actually uh, they actually understood what I was going through, what the process was that actually helped me. And my brother mm -hmm. was uh, another person. Uh, he's actually he's also a medical so. He actually understood this assignment. He said, yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's really possible to do that uh, out of uh, or these uh, stressful hours. How can we keep the mental calm? And uh, faculties have really helped. And last but not the least, uh, my girlfriend, my lover, she also I was very, very helpful. She also helped me to uh, stay in the right mind. So everyone actually. Uh, uh, help me to be in that mental good mental state to go to the exam and uh, actually my center was also very nearby uh, exam center which was just three kilometers so mm -hmm. i thought that it's the universe is conspiring for me to win so uh, and it happened so nice yes it's very important to surround you with all those positive people who will motivate you rather than drag you down and actually that also helps a lot and i'm pretty sure universe was actually conspiring like if you really want something with your whole heart the universe definitely conspires to make you reach till there i'm very proud of the journey that you have taken i'm pretty sure so many juniors are going to be inspired by this thank you ma'am. what what is a dream branch dr arjun what do you want to take uh, during my internship, I have found a particular interest towards surgical branches. So mm -hmm. surgery, ortho, ENT, those are my preferences right now. I am just thinking about things. Uh, I don't want to go into those OBG medical surgical branch again. OPG. <laughs> I'll have to no, think no, about it. <laughs> just joking. At you. I, I, I hope you get the branch of your choice in the college of your choice. Wishing you lots of success in all your future endeavors here. And I'm pretty sure so many will be inspired by you. 
thank you ma'am thank you so much everyone every faculty even at the last day rahul uh, rajesh sir put a voice message just before the exam like uh, you have actually worked a lot this is not a, a one a last one week this will matter it's an aggregative effort so just keep the right mind and go to the exam and you will get it so all of those positivities every faculty was giving and ev every single thing uh, uh, everyone who stood be stood by me everything helped and i am i am extremely happy that i have good faculty and good family uh, everyone people who love me and who supported me i am so happy for them i really really happy for you dear and uh, once again congratulations on this wonderful feat of such and wishing you lots of success in the future keep up this preservation like keep up this hard work going on even in the residency and wishing you lots of success dear. thank you and even so much Uh, yes, and even if residency initial phase you feel it's a bit tough, tough or anything, we are always there for you. You can like contact us any time as well. We'll sure always keep on. Yes, it's not the end of journey for us. Yeah, we yeah. all the best, dear. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma